And another person, hopefully, he's going to have some smart ideas for us now is Jigsaw's mental health clinical manager and occupational therapist, Jen Tredjek. Jen has uh, agreed to come on the line to us this evening just to help us a little bit with some of the issues that I touched on there with Ali in terms of what students are dealing with at their desk at the moment. Jen, good evening to you. Hi, Evelyn. Good evening. Now, Jen, I mean, the word uncertainty, I feel like I say it about 50 times a day. Uncertainty is not good for mental health. Tell us a little bit about how you are steering teenagers as they're trying to navigate all this uncertainty and control what they can control and what they can't control. Yeah, it's really challenging and uncertainty does lead to anxiety and worry. Um, I suppose, first of all, just to say, for young people, it's okay to feel angry or upset or disappointed. Um, and, you know, acknowledge those feelings is really important. Um, but it takes a lot of energy, I suppose, focusing on what we don't know and whether things will happen and, you know, if the exams go ahead or they don't go ahead or if I get these points or that point. That can take up a lot of time and energy. So bringing it back, as you said, to the things that we can control and that we can focus on. Um, And that was a great idea there, you know, linking in with people who are positive, who are feeling good. You know, we can control our news feed, who we listen to, the kind of hype that we we surround ourselves with. Absolutely. Um, we can control how much we engage with school and with schoolwork, with teachers, you know, both in terms of, of the actual subjects, but also how we're feeling about the subjects and, and you know, what's going on for us in terms of motivation. Um, and, you know, we can, we can control how much time we spend or, or focus or pay attention to our mental health as well. And that's something that, you know, is really important to remember. We can take back that control. We can focus on those areas. Um, although it's really hard, you know, of course, we're going to think ahead, but trying to bring it back down into the moment and what can I do something about right now? And to actively realise you're doing that. I mean, we got an email in, Jen, um, from a student and I think it was interesting because I think it, it reflects so much of what we're hearing in. And, and the student just says, I want to start by saying initially and even up to the start of this week, I definitely belong to people who wanted a traditional exam. Now, however, I'm not so sure what the best course of action is. And to stay, that trying to stay motivated to study for an exam, which looks less and less likely to go ahead as the days go by, is demoralising, is beyond an understatement. While I generally would regard myself as an extremely positive person, I have to say these last few weeks have been very tough. I know usually the advice is to focus on the things you can control, but even this is presenting a challenge as motivation levels are at an all-time low. What do you say about motivation to students and what's your advice for a student like that? I mean, that's similar to a lot of what we're hearing through jigsaw.ie as well on our, on our live chats with young people. Um, it is getting harder and harder just to get out of bed in the morning um, mm. and you know people are really struggling with that. Um, in terms of motivation, I suppose not waiting until you feel motivated and um, that kind of myth that I'll feel like studying. Actually, a lot of the times people will never feel like studying. So if you're kind of waiting for that feeling where I'm feeling ready and motivated, it's not going to happen. Ah, Jen, you're um, breaking my heart here. It never <laughs> kicks in, though. <laughs> and, unfortunately, well, it does kick in, but usually we have to start first. Yes. So bringing it back down, break it down to... Um, you know, even if you think about a pile of work or an essay or, or something that you're heading into and it feels like it's too much to bother getting started with, mm. don't aim for that. Just aim to start for five or ten minutes. You know, I'm just going to open my book and read for five or ten minutes and set your target at that. Um, and, and that step is easier than thinking I've got this whole essay to write. So break it right down into kind of small, achievable steps. And what you'll often find is once you start, then you kind of get sucked into it and you start feeling a little bit better. The guilty feeling starts to lift a little bit. And it's a little bit like a snowball it starts to increase gradually so bring it back down just start with it, something really small set yourself that little target and then it'll gradually build but don't wait for for, for yourself to feel like it okay. and, and the other thing with motivation is just to acknowledge what you have achieved not what you haven't done you know we can really beat ourselves up about all of the long list of things that we haven't got around to um, but actually then not recognise what we have done. And sometimes, you know, some mornings just getting out of bed is an achievement in itself. So just kind of be your, be your own cheerleader, be a bit kinder to yourself when you're thinking about what you're doing and, and, you know, what you're going through at the moment. Now, Jen, you know, we're all, everybody, it doesn't matter what age you are and what situation you're in, you know, is feeling a little bit of uncertainty and anxiety and all that. What is the advice, though, in terms of people who are maybe even struggling that little bit more? Are there certain triggers, red flags we need to watch out for where maybe they need that extra bit of support? Yeah, I mean, I, you you know yourself best, or for parents, you know your your young person, your, your son or daughter best. Um, so trust your instinct if you feel that something isn't right for you. Um, and you might notice, you know, 
we we are all struggling in different ways and so we'd expect a little bit of loss of motivation you know mm-hmm. a few changes would be normal mm-hmm. but when they're really starting to affect our day-to-day activities you know we need to pay attention so we might see kind of a loss of interest um low mood withdrawal mm-hmm. you know changes in appetite or changes in sleep that are going on for more than a few weeks really okay um or that are affecting your your ability to do the things that you need to do, then it might be time to, to think about reaching out. And, and there's loads of services available. And one of the things I'd say, you know, with the pandemic, we've heard from people kind of waiting until things get better and th- until things reopen before they'll reach out for help. Um, and we don't know when that's going to happen. So if you're not feeling great right now, um, reach out right now. Um, and jigsaw.ie, we've got loads of information for young people and for parents and we're offering um, one-to-one support online via text and group support uh, via text and we've got a phone line um, for parents or for young people to just ring up and talk through if they're you know if you're not sure I'm not sure whether this is normal um, yes should I be worried Um, 1-800 jigsaw so it's 1-800-544-729 and you can speak to a jigsaw clinician about what's going on and maybe just check it out. Okay, listen, that is just super uh, support there and information for students and the resources available to them. Thank you so much. That's Jen Tredcheck there from Jigsaw, who are always happy to uh, help and support students and uh, parents right through all this.